wait. You know, act like you already have that deal. Mm -hmm. Make act like you do every day. Wake up, do your thing. Set deadlines. You know, set release dates. Set, uh, you know, make it your business every day. You know, to to make people be aware <coughs> of you. You know, do your social media. Do your, you know, do your photos. Do your logo. Do your everything. You know, develop your team. You know, um, that kind of stuff. And um, and then make one pitch a week. When you said do one business item a day, but make a pitch a week. A pitch is like um, um, if you have a song, sending it to somebody, you know, which is more uh, focused than a business item. A business item is like returning call and that kind of stuff. You know, the last thing probably would be to reply, follow up on everything. The fo I mean, follow follow up is what kills most people and all the great contacts you come up with. You know, it's because out of sight, out of mind. You know, the next week you're in the building event meeting somebody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, like, you know, yeah. follow up. You know, follow up. You want to be that mace, right? You want to be that mace. Yeah. Yeah, man. Exactly. You know, and we're all guilty of that. You know, because we get busy and stuff. Like, I'm, I'm guilty of that, you know, a lot. I meet great people. And I'm always mean to get back to them, but my list is so long, you know. But really prioritize it and try to get it done. But it's really a full time job. It, yeah. Do you know uh, Dr. Barbara? No, Barbara. Uh, Doctor, you know what? <clears throat> you heard about him? Yeah. The first I, I, youngest black millionaire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he made a pitch, I guess you would call it. Um, it's not about being. Uh, the right place at the right time, it's being everywhere all the time. <laughs> right. Yeah, so he, he personally got a million dollars donated to him at yeah. 14 years old. Yes, yeah. yeah. Being, hey, being in the right place at the right time, good will, good vibe, good spirit all the time. I will tell you a short story. I was in my office. I, I used to, I have so many careers and so many lives. One of them is I was a playwright. I was an actor too, but one of them was a playwright. I'm not a playwright, but a, a person who wrote music for, for plays and stuff. And my friend was a playwright. He came to me and he said, you know what? Um, I, 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 my keyboard player is sick and my play starts in two hours. I need somebody to play keyboards. I already told you guys I'm not a keyboard player. You know, but I know music and I write songs, whatever. And he said, that's good enough. <laughs> he said, you know, so I ain't got nobody. And so like, anyway. I shows up, this place at San Francisco State, and you know it sucked. You know, because, <laughs> first of all, I, don't, I never rehearse, and I'm reading the script. When it says play music, I play music, I hate to write music. Singers got their own song. <laughs> I'm trying to follow along, and it's live. You know, so it really sucked. And so, um, <laughs> so it was like, so after the thing is over, and uh, the, the good thing was, it wasn't promoted well. It was big old theater, there was only like 15 people in the audience. And so, so that was a blessing. So <laughs> after, after it was over, you know, I'm packing up my stuff, and I had my little portable keyboard, and I'm packing it up like this. No, <laughs> nobody see me. And I'm packing up my stuff, and then somebody comes and taps me on the shoulder, and she, this lady says, you'd be perfect. And I said, perfect voice. She said, well, I'm doing this play. It's a two-person play. You know, it's about this comedian named Moms Mabley. And, you know, let's just be you and Whoopi Goldberg. And so, like, um, well, Whoopi wasn't Whoopi at that time, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and so I'm going, like, I'm trying to be nice to everybody. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> so really named Whoopi. You know, <laughs> that's, that's what I get for doing this shit. You know? So, like, uh, so anyway, so, you know, I gave the lady my number and stuff. I didn't think much of it. And I'm packing up my stuff. And then two weeks later, I'm picking up the People magazine. And it says, People to look out for. There's this lady standing up with dreads. And it says, Whoopi on the bottom. So, like, 10 minutes later, um, you know, the phone rings. This is that lady. And this is that lady, you know. You know, I met you at that, whatever. And so, are you ready to meet Whoopi? And so next day I meet Whoopi. You know, Whoopi was on welfare. Whoopi lived in um, a tree house. I said, it was a tree 
in the middle of my house, and there's stuff built around it. And um, you know, she was just this, you know, you know, pot smoking chick who was really smart. You know, she was well read. You know, she could talk about anything. So, you know, she was cool and everything. So, um, um, I said, well, what do you want to rehearse? She said, I hate rehearsing. Let's just show up. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so I guess the moral of the story kind of, you know, we did this play, but the thing is, always do your best, always have goodwill, because you know what, I couldn't have got that gig, I don't care how many packages I sent out, or whatever, you know, it doesn't have to be a full house, it's just got to be the right people. Mm -hmm. It could be two people in the audience, and if one of them is the right person, you, you, you hooked up. And so that's what happened with me. And so people want to know, like, oh man, how did you, huh? Because the play was supposed to be for three months. It sold out for three months and it was held over for another three months. We sold out every night for six months. But here's what's significant, is that the last week or so, everybody started coming through, Robin Williams and you name it. What's significant is Alice Walker came by. The, uh, Alice Walker is a woman who wrote The Color Purple. She came by the second night uh, before we closed. And then on the very last night, a famous film director named Mike Nichols came by. He recently passed. He's married to the anchor woman, uh, um, Diane Sawyer. And then he's won Oscars and stuff for his films. He came by and he said, Whoopi, you're fabulous. He didn't say nothing about me. But he, said, <laughs> he said, Whoopi, you're fabulous. You know, what else do you do? She said, well, I got this one woman show. So she did five minutes of her routine. And um, he said, you know what, in three weeks, I'm going to put you on Broadway in New York. We have a big party for Whoopi. Whoopi goes on to do her play. While she's doing the play, she hears about the color purple. Whoopi's now, mind you, she's on welfare. The other part of the story that I didn't say is that every night at the show, I was talking her into staying in the business. She was going, you know what? I'm really irresponsible. You know, my daughter, if she got sick, I can't afford to take her to the doctor, blah, 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 you know. You know. And so I was saying, you know, you need to do this. And so I really believe in the underdog. But she, she did this play. She heard about the color purple. She wrote Alice Walker No. You may not remember me. My name is Whoopi Goldberg. You saw my show in San Francisco, blah, blah, blah. Alice gave her a call and said, you know, honey, of course I remember you. You were fabulous, this, that, and other. Again, nothing about me, but. You know, <laughs> But she said, yeah, she called Quincy Jones, and the rest is, as they say, history. You know what I mean? So, anyway, the thing is, always do your best no matter what you do. And always be proactive about your, uh, about your gig and who you are, and maintain your character. That'll take you a long way. I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs>